One of the two, quit letting people choose for you what's most important. Just because, again, I think I told you last week, just because it's the 23rd hour, it was the 23rd hour for them last month. Amen. It was the 23rd hour for them the month before. They, they, it's been coming. This is not something new. They knew it was coming, and they waited. Yes. Amen. And they came to you, amen, to help us, Holy Spirit, with a sob story All right. that you are the only one that can help them at this layout. Help us, Holy Spirit. Amen. You you got to grab hold. Amen. Of Amen. The fact that the, you have the power to choose and quit letting others choose for you. Amen. Most people, most people, they seem to operate under the assumption, though. Amen. And then they're more reactive than proactive. We are reactive people. We will let all kinds of things go on and then react instead of being proactive. Amen. Being proactive means you know that there are some things heading your way. Prioritize those things. Quit waiting for something to happen and then react. That's how we spend our time more wisely. By being proactive. Plan your day. Amen. Plan it. Think about it the night before, before you lay down. These are the things I got to do. Put them in prioritize list. Get up in the morning and prioritize your time. Your time shouldn't be spent in the morning wasted. Amen. Amen. There are some things that are a bad choice first thing in the morning. Lord help us. Now you know what those things are. Those are your things. They're a bad choice in the morning because they are going to put you behind for the rest of the day. Amen. I don't even name money, do I? Amen. And, and listen, it seems like prioritizing our to-do list, amen, has become a thing of the past. Amen. But Jesus did it. Amen. Read the Bible. Amen. It's obvious that Jesus focused on what was important amen. and what he needed to prioritize the time. First Corinthians 10. Look at First Corinthians 10, 31. Amen. Amen. First Corinthians 10, 31. Here's what Paul says. Whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. In verse 32, he says, do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jew or Greek, or the church of God. And what is verse 33? Even as I try to please everyone in every way, for I am not seeking my own good, but the good of many, so that they may be saved. That verse 33 even as I try to please everyone in every way, Paul understands something though. Listen, I am trying to please people in everything, in every way. But listen, it's, I'm trying to do it after the good and the glory of God. You can't please everybody. Amen. You can't keep moving things that are important to you in your life. Your health. Amen. Your health is important. God prioritizes your help. Your help. Your help is important. Amen. 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 As a people, we have to be so careful. Amen. Because we will let our help just go and say we don't have time. Amen. But listen, 12 to 15 minutes a day is all you need. Now, if you go back and catalog and take, take inventory of your time, how you spend it during the day, I bet you you can find 12 to 15 minutes. All right. All right. Where you would on your do nothing. Amen. I know I do. Amen. There are those times in the day I have my amen, and I say, you know, I really need to get up and do something. Paul is understanding this. Listen, you can't please everyone, amen, while also trying to please God. And take care of yourself. It's impossible. Amen. And some of us, I know we struggle with that. Amen. We want to please people. We don't want people mad at us. Amen. But listen, do not trade your sanity. Amen. Do not trade, amen, your health. Amen. Do not, you know, here's one of the worst things that can happen. Just one of them. 
you do something you really don't want to do. And you know you don't want to do it. And then you regret that you did it. Amen. Amen. When, when, amen, when your yes should have been no. And you know, and you wanted to say it, but fear gripped you. Out here, pray. Pray to the Lord, so that the Lord will give you spirit of boldness and honesty. Because, listen, you're not being honest with yourself, and you're not being honest with the individual. Amen, I'm just telling you the truth. Sometimes you have to tell folks, no. Amen. Amen. I, I won't get into too many illustrations, but amen. Recently had somebody come by the house, always out of gas. <laughs> always need money. Amen. Always want something. Amen. All the time. There has never been a time in probably 20 years that this person didn't need something from you. Amen. Never show up to say, hi, how you doing? How things going? Never show up to say, you know something? I really owe you a whole lot. <laughs> Amen. But every trip, every visit is I need. Come on. Amen. You want the short version? I said no. All right. That's the short version. You said no? No. Well, can you just follow me? You know. <laughs> Not leaving the house. No. The answer is no. You go all the way over here. With no gas. No. That was the answer. I know that don't sound very pastoral. Amen. But I just need to help you to understand you have to be honest. Amen. And, and be honest with people. And, and listen, I have to just let the person know that I'm tired of you trying to use me. Amen. I'm tired of trying to use me. That's because that's all this really is. Is you trying to use me? Because you don't go around the corner and find somebody else or up the street and find somebody else. No. That was the end. Lord, I'm going to go home. <laughs> Understand this. This is important. Here's the other thing. Here's the other thing, and I'll be done. Except the fact that you don't have omnipresence. Amen. Amen. You don't have omnipresence. You can't be everywhere at once, amen, and everything to everyone. That's right. That's right. Amen. If we're going to redeem our time, amen, you got to focus on one important thing at a time. Everything can be important. But I'm telling you right now, folks who live their lives like the one I'm talking about, <laughs> when they come to you, Everything's important right now. Right now. Come on, man. Right it's an emergency right now. You got to move right now. Hey, man, if you're not careful, you, you're running. You're moving right now. Because you don't understand. All right. Man. Man, listen, you, you, you can't be everywhere and everything to everyone at the same time. Oh, mm, man. All right. Heaven's speaking. Amen. I, I said it last week. There's some grown folks too that are in your circle. You know, they come of age now. Amen. Well, there's some stuff they can do for themselves. You don't have to go. Come on. Amen. Amen. One of the things that I try to do with my children is teach them how to have conversations with adults early. You don't have to have these adult conversations. I'm standing with you, but you got to have this adult conversation. Amen. Because I'm not going to be able to be there all the time. That's right. Amen. And if you can't have an adult conversation with an adult, <laughs> amen. amen, I'm not talking about talking to them, you know, in a disrespectful manner. Right. But being able to just handle business amen. as an adult. Yeah. Amen. To ask the right questions. Right. Amen. It's so important because parents, you're not going to be there all the time. Right. You're not omnipresent. Right. Amen. And so look at this. When, when the Bible says that the Word became flesh, Jesus became flesh, He embraced human limitations. Amen. One of them is He could not be everywhere at the same time. We know God can be everywhere at the same time, but Jesus in the flesh couldn't be in two places at the same time. 
So watch this. He had to deal just like you and me with all of those situations and challenges to redeem his time. Amen. Including being distracted. All right. Including people wanting his time when he was doing something else. Amen. I think a few weeks ago we talked about a couple of them. Amen. We talked about the woman. Shows up in the crowd, touches his hand on his garment. Yeah. Amen. It distracted Jesus. And it took away from him going to Dairus' house. But here's what Jesus knew. I'm going to get to his house. Right. I know I'm going to get there. Amen. He already knew what was going to happen. He was going to get there. But along the way, Jesus knew that this was an important distraction. This woman in this crowd had an issue. And she needed to hear from Jesus that you have been made whole. Yeah. Yeah. Talk again about the man who was lowered down from sin while Jesus is, amen, through the roof. They tore the roof open while he was preaching and teaching. Right. Amen. In both of those situations, Jesus commends their faith. So he prioritized, he focused, even though he was doing something that was more important. Sometimes he welcomed the distraction. But other times, Jesus made sure, amen, that he eliminated all the distractions. Here's another one. Matthew chapter 12. Amen. amen. Matthew chapter 12, 45, 46 through 50. You read it when you get home. But I'll give you the, I'll give you the Reader's Digest version for those who are old enough to know what Reader's Digest means. Amen. Jesus is there. He is teaching. Amen. To, he is talking to the crowd. Amen. And his brothers Sister and his mom show up. Amen. Brothers and his mother show up. Amen. And while Jesus is talking to the crowd, they come and whisper in his ear. Amen. Your mother and your brothers are here. And Jesus says, who are my mother and brother? And he points to his disciples and said, those that do the will of my father. Those are my mother and brother. Now, now listen. Look at this situation. Amen. Here's the main point of the passage. Amen. Jesus, amen, says, who is my mother and brother? Amen. Who's my family? Amen. But here's the other side of the story. Jesus is working. You missed that. Jesus is working. Amen. He's talking to the crowd. He's doing God's work. And they show up. He's doing the work that God sent him. And listen, if you read that chapter, Jesus is doing some heavy preaching and teaching. All right. All right. Amen. Yeah, read, read the passage because he's teaching about the Sabbath day. Yeah. Because they got it all wrong. He's teaching and preaching about the Sabbath. Amen. And then while he's teaching and preaching, amen, they bring him this mute, uh, blind, demon possessed man. He, he heals that person, and then guess what? He gets called Beelzebub. Yeah. You know, you would leave with the devil. Right. Jesus got to deal with that. He's dealing with some heavy principles here, y'all. Amen. And then while he is doing that, Jesus now dies real deep. And he goes into talking about Jonah. Mm -hmm. Talking about Jonah was in the heart of the, the, uh, the fish. Amen. Not where. Amen. Make sure that I am here. The fish for three days. Amen. And he says, in the like manner, the Son of Man will be in the... He talking about his death, burial, and resurrection. All right. All right. There's some heavy stuff, y'all, that's going on. All right. And then it says, and then all of a sudden, amen, out of nowhere, here comes this man. Wanting him to stop teaching and preaching and doing the will of God. Yeah. And I know 